how we doing? Welcome back into the Bronco and the Pig. As always, I'm the Pig with my sports trainee, the the Bronco Delaney. How is life in Boise? I I'm sure it's it's starting to warm up now that we are officially into April. It is. It's actually really nice out, um, but I'm not gonna lie. Campus has been kind of boring. There's just there's no sports. There's nothing going on. So yeah, I'm just waiting for the school year to end at this point. Yeah, I feel you there. There is uh, <laughs> college basketball has officially ended as of Monday, and obviously football has been done for a little bit. We do have baseball. It is baseball season, so there's uh there's that jazz going on, but uh. Yeah, as of Monday, we have two national champions. We have our men's national champion and our women's national champion. Uh, did you watch any of those games at all? I watched the very end of the women's championship, uh, the Iowa versus South Carolina. I watched the end oh. of it. I didn't watch the whole game, but I am happy I watched it. Okay, and no men's? You didn't watch any of the men's game? No, I didn't even like see it anywhere. Honestly, yeah. now that I think about it, yeah, it was a. Uh, it, I'm not gonna lie, it was a little, um, it was a little anticlimactic. UConn went back to back. Congrats to the UConn Huskies. They went back to back, uh, and they won by 16. I think it was or 15, 15 mm-hmm. or 16. Just sheer dominance, sheer yeah. dominance, and congrats to South Carolina. Uh, going thirty eight and zero on the season, no losses. That's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. And uh, they beat Caitlin Clark and Iowa. I think that brings us into the first story of the week: is just college basketball and how it it finished up. What was your? I'll put you on the spot here. What was your thoughts on March Madness as a whole, men's or women's? Um, I didn't really follow as much of the women's as I should have, but the men's, I just thought it was kind of predictable and a little bit boring just because like, we kind of talked about this last week. It was just, it was the first and second seed just dominating the bracket. And that was, that was a whole tournament. In my opinion, I just thought it was very predictable. Yeah. I like to call it chalky. Very chalky. Yeah, I'm. I, when you look at it, compared to seasons in the past, there weren't that many Cinderella stories other than NC State, the Wolfpack, mm-hmm. and DJ Burns, who ended up losing to Purdue. Now, I have two thoughts on this, okay? So one side of me is saying, dang, it, it's always fun when those tiny schools win and – they go deep into the tournament and the one seeds lose and you get some crazy team to come in and win the tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on the other side, I'm saying I, I have that thought of we saw the best two teams play in the national championship. In my opinion, yeah, they are the best two teams and they played each other. And UConn, by far, not even close, is the best men's net, uh, team in the country. Not even close. Yeah, it was a little predictable, a little boring, but it was good basketball. So as a as a fan of sports, it's it's you know it's good. It's good, in my opinion. Sorry, you said you ahead. didn't follow the women. Mm-mm. I I have a, I have a bone to pick. So on the women's side, I'm a little upset about this because I I don't I don't I don't get why some of the behavior that we've seen is is taking place. So the women's side, South Carolina went 38-0. They, mm-hmm. they beat Iowa. They beat Caitlin Clark in the championship. Did you feel like Caitlin Clark got more attention losing than South Carolina got winning? Mm-hmm. That's actually a good question. I'm not sure. And one thing that I actually wanted to talk about was um, after the game, the South Carolina head coach – gave a little bit of a speech and she she and her speech actually thank thanked um Caitlin Clark and just saying that like thank you for pushing us but also thank you for 
bringing a name to women's sports and making people watch women's sports, which I thought was kind of interesting. Well, um, and and I don't know if you've seen it. It's relatively new. It's only been the last couple of days. But a lot of women basketball players, professionals, are kind of talking crap against Caitlin Clark, saying, you know, this once you go pro, it's not the same. Uh, you need to, you need, I, like they're saying they can't wait to knock her off her pedestal and that mm. uh, she's not going to be remembered because she never won a national championship. I think they are dumb. I think that is the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Because in my opinion, Caitlin Clark brought more people to women's basketball than any person in the world. Even if, yeah, even it, even though she never won a game, she never won a national championship. She mm -hmm. brought like her personality, the way she played the game, uh, how good she is, uh, some of the highlights that she used to do. That's that's what brought people close or brought people to wanting to watch and wanting to support women's basketball. And the fact that the pros are now bagging on her saying like all this stuff, like you should be grateful that she is I now, agree. You, she's now entering the league and all these people are going to watch her, which means mm -hmm. they're going to watch you. Exactly. Do you have any thoughts on that? I I do think they have a point. I think when she goes pro, it is going to be different and just a different level of competition. But I also agree with what you said, and they they should be thanking her. Like I hate to say it, but no one no one cared about the women's bracket before Caitlin Clark. I'm shocked that professional players are knocking her because. It's almost like they forgot she broke a world record not that long ago. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that's just yeah. Wrong. It's yeah, and and it's it kind of I I don't like com comparing everything to or like comparing different sports because it's mm -hmm. so different. But if you look at someone like Mike Trout, who is never, he's actually never won a playoff game, let alone a championship. He's never won a playoff game. He brings so much to the sport just himself by being how great he is. Otani. Otani now is played in the league for five years. He's in his sixth year. Never won a playoff game. Never never won a championship. Never won a playoff game. He, think about all the people that are watching baseball because of those two guys. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just a small example. I mean, Aaron Judge, he broke the record for the most home runs in it, or uh, most American League home runs in the season a couple years ago. He's I don't he's never won a championship. Yeah. There's I mean there's I could rattle off so many names, baseball, basketball, um even into football, some unbelievable players who bring fans, who bring the sport up that have never won a championship. It's part of the game. It's they're they're called team sports for a reason. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. how good you are. You still got to be surrounded by some good players to win a national championship. If you made such a big name for yourself, is a national title really that important? Because you kind of already did what you needed. Well, I mean, that that's always something that people are going to compare. Oh, he won a championship three times and this person only won it once. You know, mm -hmm. it is it is a major accomplishment to win a championship and to be, especially if you're the best player on that team, when you won a championship, that's a major thing. When it comes to Caitlin Clark and March madness, that tournament is so difficult to win to begin with that. I think Caitlin Clark's career and the accomplishments she made is without a doubt, going to live in history her name is mm -hmm. going to be known for for probably ever if i had to guess yeah I so agree. i mean you had celebrities you had other athletes wearing her jersey you know shouting her out on twitter and instagram and all this stuff and she she deserves credit where credit's due and mm -hmm. 
and and it's not just on the court it's off the court as well her personality how she handles things yeah she's a little you know sometimes on the court she gets a little emotional but every player does that you know it's sports Mm -hmm. so anyways congrats to south carolina who beat caitlin clark they went 38 no it's another amazing accomplishment and they were by far the best team but that kind of wraps up college basketball Actually, not kind of. It does wrap up college basketball. <laughs> um, and March Madness is over. We will move along to our next story. And I, I'm I'm going to put you on the spot here because it's some high-level thinking, okay? Mm-hmm. So right now, the MLB is fighting with the players. So the players' union is fighting with the league over the pitch clock. So... This past weekend, you had a whole plethora of in- injuries. Like, I don't know, eight, nine guys all get hurt, all in their elbow, throwing, pitching. They are blaming it on the fact that there is now a clock that they have to pitch it in. So it's a little faster. Yeah. You have to pitch faster. Do you think there's any correlation between the two? Or do you think it's just kind of... Okay, when I... I heard about this whole fiasco controversy and I actually did some research because I thought it was kind of interesting. So in my opinion, from a fan perspective, I think you need a pitch clock. If you don't, the game is going to be three, three and a half hours, much longer than it needs to be. And it kind of keeps the game going Mm -hmm. from a fan perspective. But I do understand what, the players are saying, but I don't think it's a reason to get rid of it because in my opinion, these players are saying they're throwing too many pitches, throwing too fast and throwing too hard in like a short period of time. Right. Yeah. That's what they're claiming. Basically. I just think, I just think it should be almost expected as baseball continues. The expectations are higher. If that makes sense. Like, you should be throwing faster. You should be throwing harder. So I think you should prepare for that a little bit. Yeah, I I agree. And I I also am on the side that um, the pitch clock needs to stay. Um, So a little facts about the pitch clock. Last year was the first year they did it. Hmm. It's the first time they had done it. And they saw a skyrocket in fans. They saw, saw a skyrocket in viewers. The games skyrocketed shorter down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's good for the game. It's good for the fans. It keeps people interested. It keeps the game going. And there's a big but to this. I don't. I can't figure out if that's the reason pitchers are getting hurt or players are getting hurt. Mm-hmm. Because last year it wasn't like this. It wasn't as bad. So I think it's a fluke kind of thing. Now. If in a month, the eight or nine injuries that have happened is now 50 injuries or 60 or something like crazy like that. Yeah. Now we're now we're talking about there's a, there's an issue, you know, there's something mm-hmm. going on. And I really think that the main reason people are freaking out about this is because it's all big name stars. It's all the big name guys that are getting hurt that are drawing. It's drawing more attention. So. I agree. I 100% agree with you. You're a professional athlete. Uh, you need to prepare yourself, prepare your arm, prepare your body. And you know going into the season that this pitch clock exists. It's not like it snuck mm-hmm. up on you. And you had all spring training to get ready. And I understand injuries happen. Okay. Sometimes you can't control it. But it's part of the game. It's, it, yeah. it's the way it, it is what it is. So I, I just think I just think at this very moment the injuries that are happening are not because of the the pitch clock. That's just my opinion and I don't I think they need to keep it. And to be honest, I think they will because of the amount it benefited the league. Yeah. Not so much the players, but it benefited the league. I can't imagine them getting rid of it now this year they did tweak it a little bit they shortened it when player when there's runners on base so they have less time when there's runners on base so they shorten that um so i i guess maybe 
just make it the way it was last year and see see that but yeah at this point too bad so sad like you can't <laughs> it, you know it's set in stone this is this is what you get you get what you get you don't mm-hmm. can't throw a fit but here I'll, <laughs> I'll rattle off the the big names real quick and and spencer strider uh shane bieber yuri perez um that's the three biggest names that have come up and there's been a slew of other injuries, not pitcher related, but those are the three biggest names. And those are some big names, let me tell you, uh, that are now sitting on the sideline. But we'll dive more into the MLB when we get to uh, sport by sport. But we're going to continue on. And I'm excited about these next two stories, but because it's it's a little out of our comfort zone. We don't know much about them. <laughs> but. It is everything, uh, every everything everywhere is, and I don't know about you, is WrestleMania right now. <laughs> okay. All, it is the only thing I see on Instagram, on TikTok, on <laughs> any social media. The only thing I see now is WrestleMania, and I can't figure out why. And then I started watching some clips, and I get why, okay? <laughs> WrestleMania was on Sunday, Sunday night. Did you look into WrestleMania? Are you seeing the the craze frenzy of WrestleMania? I have seen it, and I'm not gonna lie. After it came up on my for you page, I I got hooked. I started to do it a deep dive. I I gotta tell you. So we talked about it last week. Uh, sports is the ultimate drama, ultimate reality mm-hmm. TV show, the ultimate show that you can't you know you can't script, but scripted sports like the WWE <laughs> might be a very close second to the best reality show. Cause there's some, they come up with these characters and these storylines and the fireworks and the, the entrances and the crazy moves and, and, you know, Oh, the backstabbing and the, the teaming up and the tag teams and the jumping off a steel cage through a table. It is incredible. <laughs> And I watched WWE as a kid, and I wasn't, we weren't super into it, but we watched it occasionally because it was fun to watch. But my God, as I grew up, I realized that this is an entire industry and there is so much more to it. And people love WWE, Mm -hmm. love WWE. Doesn't matter. I was seeing videos of like 40, 50 year olds, like, screaming at the TV and like freaking out because John Cena is back in the ring <laughs> for the first time in whatever. Did you see these people? I did see it. And also, maybe I'm just stupid. I had no idea The Rock came from WWE. His name is Dwayne Johnson and his wrestler name was The Rock. That's why everyone yeah. knows him as Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Like, He's I like, didn't know that. He's in the Wrestle uh, WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, He's, I didn't know they had that yeah. either. Yeah. But one thing I will say is when I watched it, you're completely right. I felt like I was watching a bad soap opera. Soap opera. Like, it was yeah. – <laughs> I just I, – I loved it, There's but like, I also hated you it. You know, and um, I got to say, my favorite thing in the whole world is – the reaction of the crowd when two guys, <laughs> two guys are fighting in the middle of the ring, and then all of a sudden, like the entrance song drops for The Rock, and it's like the crowd goes nuts, and The Rock comes running out in the middle of the fight. It's yeah. like a like yeah. like just interrupting interrupting that. the fight. That happened three times. The Undertaker <laughs> came out and it like gets all black, and he's like standing right behind The Rock. It's like no, I. I didn't see that okay you i'm did? not gonna lie yeah when it like goes pitch black and the rock is like facing the crowd he's like trying yeah. to hype him up and then the guy just shows up behind him it was, yeah like i don't even know how to describe it i i think everyone needs to watch it and i want to go and watch it in person really yeah bad. we we want to go to a <laughs> wwe match okay because i don't care if it's wrestlemania or not but like I don't it was it was mind blowing. I never seen anything <laughs> like this. I mean, we yeah, we watched it as kids, but you know, it was it was just like an occasional thing. I didn't realize 
the length of it and the the mm-hmm. extensive stories and stuff with these people it's it's great it's the greatest thing ever i <laughs> I, I i wish i i wish i followed it i wish i did because yeah. i would appreciate it so much more cuz that's the other thing that i love about it is you know John Cena or the guy who won the the main event at WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes. I don't I don't know anything about him, but he won the main event and he's like the big star or whatever. And the, you know, just the fan like love for him winning and like just the just the fans just <laughs> all in. All in. You don't see that in anything. I don't care who you are. I, I don't care what sport you're watching. There is nothing like WWE fans going to a wrestling match and some superstar comes out that they haven't seen in a month. Like, yeah, it's been one <laughs> month, month or something. And some guy comes running out. They go nuts. They go nuts. I know. I We we have to go see it. Where do I don't even know where they do it. I'm sure in arenas, like in some sort of arena or something. Maybe when we're back in Anaheim, we can go to like the Honda <laughs> yeah. Center. Or, I I don't know. I, I I've never even looked into it. I've never. I don't even know what like tickets look like or yeah. how it works or. But it seems like something fun to go see and be a part of. I like. I want to be like a diehard fan for some random WWE guy. Like I don't <laughs> know. Great. Like be this just diehard guy for the one. I don't. It, it's amazing. WrestleMania is amazing. It took over social media, and it's still taking over social media. Is all I see. You know, The Rock, John Cena, Logan Paul. Uh, I know. I did see the that. Uh, the Undertaker. I saw Jason Kelsey was out there. Uh, it was either yeah like he he made a guest appearance did you not see that no no he like Wait, so they're like they're like hiring celebrities to do this. they bring celebrities all cameos. the time yeah so Wait, that jason, is so cool so get this jason kelsey and his teammate lane johnson who's a offensive lineman they're the teammates mm-hmm. they both jump from out of the crowd Wearing jeans and a and a cut off t shirt and a and a Mexican wrestler mask, so nobody yeah. knows who they are. They come yeah. jump out and they like attack some guy and beat him up. And then the guy that they're friends with or whatever wins the match because these two beat him up. And everyone's like, "Who's that?" Like the announcers. And they, that's that's another thing. The announcers, the the broadcast oh, they're guys, amazing. they're amazing because they they act like they don't know what's going on, but they have a freaking <laughs> script in front of them. Yeah. They're like, "Who are these guys? Those guys are huge! Like, what the heck?" And then they rip off the mask. Oh man, WWE Wait, that's, took my. That's iconic. <laughs> yeah, WWE took my heart away. It's it's the greatest thing ever. I I, I was so impressed. I'll uh, I'll send you Jason Kelsey at. I don't know if he was at WrestleMania or if it was just another match or something, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I don't know how it works, but uh, it was, it's amazing. And then we're moving into our next story, which is this weekend. Uh, and we're recording this. It hasn't started yet. It starts on Thursday, Thursday morning, the masters, the, the, the classiest uh, sporting event in the world. Uh, the masters. What do you know about the masters? I'm literally gonna, nothing just, nothing honestly nothing it, i know it's, it's a golf, golf tournament, tournament and okay. i know there's like isn't there like really strange rules like the fans have to follow oh oh uh well so so i it's kind of cool because the masters what it does every fan gets a chair they give out mm-hmm. like a full like a like a little lawn chair kind of thing the gates to the golf course open and when they open it's first come first serve like you set up your chair and you sit there that's your chair mm-hmm. it's it's marked it has all the stuff you're not allowed to move someone else's chair you're not allowed to uh you know like n- knock people over or anything like that once your chair is there that's yeah. your spot and you sit there for the whole day and you watch all these people go and golf the best thing that I've seen is like all these middle-aged men, like older men who are golf fans with these chairs. The other rule they're not allowed to do is they're not allowed to run on the course. Mm. So they're all like hightailing it speed to walking. the best spot. Yeah, like speed walking. 
uh, to the best spot on the course to try and get the the the, the best view of their favorite mm-hmm. hole or whatever. So I think that's funny. But uh, the Masters is cool. It's four days uh, for – I'll break it down for you. It's four days, and um, you they add up all the scores as they go along. And obviously, whoever has the best score at the end of Sunday wins. Um, mm-hmm. The winner gets a green jacket. It, it's okay, like a, I did know that. Yeah, it's green like a, jacket. Uh, like, a, like a suit jacket kind of, right? Yeah, like a sport coat kind of thing yeah so the masters it's the biggest tournament in golf like ever it's considered like the the championship i guess is like Mm -hmm. i know there's i know there's other big tournaments but the masters is the top by far so uh we're gonna get to see tiger woods tiger woods is playing in the tournament so one thing about the masters is if you if you've won before a green jacket you automatically get in the tournament for the rest of your life so Hmm. every once in a while you get these like old geezers who like won it in like the 80s and they're like oh i'll play like and they come out and they they play and they normally don't do very well because they're old and out of shape Mm -hmm. and haven't played but yeah if you've won the masters you automatically make the the tournament for life you get automatic that's kind of cool yeah eventually When they have enough winners, they should do only a winner's masters. Like only okay. the previous win- winners get to. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you something really quick while I set it up. Okay, so the masters, the winner, the winner for the year before, so like 2023, for example, since this is 2024, uh-huh. the winner gets to decide what all the players eat at the dinner the night before the tournament starts so wednesday okay. night all the players that are playing in the tournament and their caddies and their wives i'm sure or whatever they sit down at this super 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 fancy dinner and the winner of last year decides what the menu is and what the what they okay eat, what oh i'm sorry it's just the champions it's called the champion dinner so anyone who's ever won is allowed to be at this dinner Oh, okay. Okay, here, I'll give you some examples. So Tiger Woods, one time, he f- he famously served burgers, fries, and milkshakes. Okay. Just, I don't, I'm sure they were amazing, but <laughs> yeah. burgers, fries, and milkshakes. Carl Schwartzel, in 2000, 2012, served a, a chilled seafood bar with jumbo shrimp, lobster cocktail, crab meat, crab legs, and oysters. Okay. Fancy. Adam Scott in 2014, he served Wagyu beef and lobster and sautéed spinach. and uh, So you can get as fancy as you want or as simple as you want, which is pretty okay. freaking awesome. Uh, but it's funny cause they, they shout out Tiger that, that when he chose burgers, fries and milkshakes, uh, that was back when he was a kid. He was like, it was like 2000 and like 2004 or something like that. And he oh, was really young. Funny. So he chose burgers, <laughs> fries and milkshakes. So that's pretty cool. All right. Well, that kind of concludes our stories. Um, our top stories of the week. We're going to move into sport by sport, uh, real quick. The NFL is going to continue to roll on. The draft is in two weeks. So in two weeks, you will hear from us and we'll talk about the draft. We will dive into the draft and that is going to be a good episode for Delaney because <laughs> the draft is, it's, it's not something that it's a sports person's thing. Like you mm-hmm. have to follow sports to understand what's going on, to know what's going on. So it's, we're going to talk about the draft and how it works in a little bit there, and uh, but that's in a couple weeks. But just to run through really quick, I have a couple points that, that happen uh, in free agency in the offseason. So the Bills, they signed an offensive lineman. Uh, the Eagles signed a cornerback Avante Maddox, and they extended Jordan Malata. So uh, Jason Kelsey's best, best buddy, Jordan Malata. He's he signed a three year extension, uh, and then the Panthers signed Derek Brown for to a four year extension. So the the Panthers are gearing up a little bit, but they still got a long ways to go. Like I said, the NFL there's not much going on. Uh, 
other than teams are getting ready for the draft. So in a couple of weeks, look for our uh, NFL draft episode. We will dive deep into that. And uh, Glennie can experience her first draft here. <laughs> uh, moving on to the MLB. And we, we talked about the injuries. There's a, quite a few injuries that I'm going to run through really quick. And there's some major news that came out. And like I said, we're, we're recording this earlier in the week. We normally record on Fridays, but it is earlier in the week. So this major news is, is big time for our Orioles. The number one prospect in baseball, Jackson Holiday, is being called up to play for the Baltimore Orioles. And it's about time. This kid <laughs> is this kid is special. He is uh, electric, fast, power, good fielder. He is the definition of a five-tool player. And the Orioles are so excited to have him. He's probably going to play second base. Have you heard about the Orioles minor league team? No, I haven't. No? Okay, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to run run it through you for a second. <clears throat> the Orioles minor league AAA team is called the Norfolk uh, Riptides or Tides or whatever. Well, the Orioles right now, they have five guys – uh, in the top 100 prospects, which is what pretty... is a prospect? So, is that a prospect like new players, is... right? Yeah, a prospect is basically someone who's never played in the pros. Um, okay, they're like they're like coming up, like, yeah, so like Jackson Holiday, he's the number one prospect, he's ranked as the best player who's not a pro. Or not uh, in okay. the majors, I should say. Not yeah. in the majors. The league and m- many websites and stuff, they rank these players who've never been in the pro or been the MLB. And it, they do a top 100 list. Well, the mm-hmm. Orioles have five guys in this top wow. 100. They actually, they actually have more than five. But five, five guys in the top 100 play for their AAA team. And they are murdering teams. Like, dominating. Hmm. They won uh, the other day. They scored 26 runs. And That's just, insane. Yeah, they're just killing teams. So everyone's like, oh, like, why don't you bring them up? All this stuff. But the Orioles already have, like, all these good players. So the big controversy mm-hmm. right now with, with our Orioles, we are Angel and <laughs> Oriole fans to the, to, the, to the end, is what do they do with all these stud, stud young guys? Like, got it. You gotta yeah. trade them. You're just gonna waste it away. You know. Wait, quick Wait. question. Say mm-hmm. you play AAA in Baltimore. Do you have to go to that city's team? Does that make yeah, sense? Yes. Or so, can you like go um, anywhere? No. So so you are a player under the Baltimore Orioles franchise. Their their umbrella. Yeah. Um. So you are a player, and you're at a an employee it'd be like mm. it'd be like being an employee for a company and you work at a different uh site but you get paid okay less. yeah that me yeah. that makes sense so all that's why that's why they're ranked as they're the orioles prospect so mm-hmm. they're with the orioles no matter what and the orioles can bring them on to the mlb team whenever they want the kick the the thing where things get a little weird is New players, players that enter the MLB or the majors, Mm -hmm. they are only under your control for five years. They can only be under your control for five years. So after five years, they they can become a free agent. Oh, okay. Does that Hmm. make sense? So a lot of teams, a lot of teams, what they do is they don't want to bring these young superstars up too quickly because they want to bring them all up at the same time so that they're really good. And like the team's good, you know, they don't want to waste those five years and then have to spend yeah. a bunch of money and stuff. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Well, that was the major news that came out um, this week was Jackson Holiday is coming up. He is the number one prospect in baseball. And Delaney and I, the Bronco and the Pig, are very excited to see what he can do. Um, he looks like a child. I will send you a picture of him, Delaney. He <laughs> looks like he's 12 years old, but the dude <laughs> is is a stud. Okay. 
Uh, some other stuff that happened. Um, Trevor Story dislocated his shoulder. He's supposed to miss six to nine months, which sucks. He has to have surgery. Uh, Luis Robert is supposed to miss a bunch of months with a hip strain. Bieber and Perez are out for the year. We talked about that earlier. Spencer Strider has UCL damage, but it hasn't been determined if he's going to miss an extended period of time or not. And then uh, Jason Hayward has got some back stiffness, so he's going to miss some time as well. Um, all right, let's get into our power rankings. Delaney, you want to go first or second with your top 10? I'll go first because I'm actually really proud of mine. I okay. took your advice and I looked at uh-huh. some stats. Okay. Cool. Which, uh, first of all, is really confusing and kind of complicated. But That's so fine. I looked at, I looked at the run differential difference. Run differential. Like that. Yeah. Yes, so I looked at that. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? It was. I had to look it up, but it was yeah. subtracting runs from run scored. Yeah, so right? uh, it's basically the difference between how many runs you give up and how many runs you score. So obviously the higher the number, the better, because that mm-hmm. means you're scoring more runs than you're giving up. That's a great yeah. – actually, that's a really good stat to look at. I'll, I'll give you credit. <laughs> okay, you. So, so let me hear your top ten. Okay, top ten. Ten, mm-hmm. I have the Cubs. Okay. Um, nine, I have the Yankees. Eight, I have the Rangers. Next, I have the Royals, then the Pirates, the Red Sox, the Orioles, the Braves, and then I've never heard of this team in my entire life, but they had the highest run different, whatever Wait, it was. Let me guess. What? Let me guess. Hold on. What team okay. What team have you never heard of that has a high <laughs> run differential? The Brewers? No, I know Maybe? who they are. You know who no. they are? All right. Who is it? The Cleveland Guardians. Oh, that's okay. I know why you don't. You've never heard of them. It's because they used to be the Cleveland Indians. And they changed so their name. They're, mm. they're, they changed their name two years ago. Okay. Out of the Cleveland so, Guardians. Okay, they but the have, Cleveland wait, Guardians they, are my number one. They have the highest yeah. run differential. And look at you spitting numbers I know. at me. Uh, <laughs> like... The Cleveland, the Cleveland Guardians. Wow, I didn't realize that they have the highest run differential. That's crazy. I guess because they're not giving up runs because they don't score a lot of runs. They're very uh, defensive. They they're very up. okay. Wait. Yeah. They... Oh, it says it's thirty-six. Is the difference thirty-six? And, the and then the Bra- Yeah, and the Braves is twenty-five, which is right below them. So it's a that's big, a big difference between. That's a big gap. Between the that's two. crazy. Yeah. Because I, I don't even have the Braves or the Braves, the Guardians in my top 10. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, yeah, I, didn't, I, I was really proud of my know. top 10. No, very good. Very good job. I'm very impressed. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll run through mine really quick. I still have the Dodgers as my number one team. I think the Dodgers, I'm surprised you didn't even have the Dodgers in there. But uh, I do have them as my number one team. But at 10, I, I kind of went hometown homie, the Angels. The Angels are playing well. They're winning games. I don't know why or how, <laughs> but they're winning games. They're supposed to be bad, but we love it. Mike <laughs> Trout Mike Trout is just carrying them. He put them in a backpack, and he's just hiking up the hill with them in there. Uh, number nine, I do have the Red Sox. They have started off scorching hot, um, but I don't think that they're going to last. Eight, I have the Phillies. The Phillies always start off cold. They all every year. I don't know why they are always start off slow. And then all of a sudden something clicks and they murder teams. Um, Seven. I have the reds. You had the reds. Um, I want you, your game of the week. I'm next week. My goal is for you to watch a reds game. I want you to watch (laughs) Ellie de la Cruz. Okay. He's their. I think he's playing shortstop. He's their shortstop. He is massive. He is fast, <laughs> and I don't think I've ever seen someone like hit the ball as hard as he he does. He's amazing. Hmm. Uh, number six, I have the Pirates. They've started off hot as well. Five, I do have our O's, and they might skyrocket here with Jackson Holiday entering the lineup. The four, I have the Rangers. Three, I do have the Braves still, and two, I still have the Yankees. It's still it's kind of stayed the same at the top: Dodgers, Yankees, Braves. 
Um, mm. But they are the three best teams by far, in my opinion. But hey, good job! I'm 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 impressed. Uh, run <laughs> differential, okay. Well, keep up your power rankings because we'll do that every single week. Um, that kind of wraps up baseball for sport to sport. Uh, we did talk about basketball. I just a quick wrap up with basketball. You know, UConn has ended. Uh, one South Carolina one. Zach Eady and Clay, Caitlin Clark both deserve. Uh, to be players of the year. They had amazing years. They're both going to go off to the pros. Uh, college basketball is done. We're done until uh, till about September, October, somewhere in there is usually when it starts mm-hmm. up again. So um, great season. A little underwhelming March Madness, but on to baseball. It is now baseball, baseball, baseball until August, which is amazing. Uh, Delaney, you got a mascot of the week for me? I do. And I like this one just because I think it's kind of funny and I don't really understand why. So I want you to look up Xavier Blue Bob. Blob. Excuse me. Xavier Blue Blob. Okay. Apparently this is their second mascot or secondary mascot, but they said they wanted like a friendlier alternative to like the normal scary mascot. Did you look up a photo? Yeah, I, I'm looking at it. He's uh, he's very interesting. What's the first? Oh, the first. Okay, so here's a photo. I'm looking at a photo of both the mascots. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember what the Xavier uh, nickname is. They got to be like cowboys or something. Musketeers. Doesn't he? Maybe? Doesn't the blob looks like he would literally be on like Sesame Street too? Yeah, he kind of looks like a uh, like a deformed Cookie Monster. Yeah, a little bit. That's that's what I'm getting, but uh, yeah, no, I I, I kind of like him. He's kind of cool looking, <laughs> but I like the I like the blue blob. Did you find yeah. out how how they came up with the blue blob? Like what? Like it was it was a long time ago, but I actually thought it was gonna be. You know how we've had past mascots that have been like um, a student contest. That's what yeah. I thought it was, but yeah, they just said they wanted a friendlier mascot. I guess. Good point. Good point. Well, good find. I've never, I've never heard of that. You continue to blow away the mascot <laughs> of the week with just the most random things I've ever seen. So, with Xavier Blue Blob, mascot of the week. That's pretty sweet. All right, mm-hmm. let's wrap things up. The final question of the week. I hinted at it before. Uh, it is going to be: um, if you won the Masters and you are in charge of. The menu for the champions dinner before the Masters the next year. What would be your menu? You have to pick an appetizer, a main course with two sides, mm-hmm. and a dessert. Go. Okay. I think this one's easy because if I was picking the menu, I would definitely try to sabotage my competition. I Damn. would give them. I would. I would. I would give them. The Caniac Combo from Kate's, from Raising Kate's. Do you know what I'm talking why? about? Yeah, I know exactly because what you're talking about, but why that? Every time I eat that, I feel like I'm going to throw up. So I just... Why do you get <laughs> it? Like, because it's really good. You uh, can't deny yeah. it. But That's true. I feel like that is the perfect... Especially like an athlete body. They're like, oh, I can't eat it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I think but it's perfect. It's not a... That's not a bad answer. So Canes mm-hmm. then is yeah. what you're going with. All right. Yep. Well, I'm thinking, God, there's so many routes you could go. I'm thinking, you know, like a like a a, a twist on a Thanksgiving, maybe. Mm, like okay. a because uh, first thing I thought of was like dessert. The best dessert in the world is apple pie with ice cream and or not apple pie, pumpkin pie with ice cream. Okay. Either of them. Either of them. So <laughs> that's that's what I was thinking. But then I was like, well, well, what if we did like a something with gravy, but not turkey? Because nobody likes turkey. Um, so like a honey glazed ham with some gravy. Ooh, ooh, yeah. What a great yeah. option. Yeah. I would man. love to be a plus one at that dinner. Ooh. Uh, yeah. So like <laughs> maybe like a honey glazed ham and some. Some like some mashed potatoes or something. Mm. I, I think that's where I would go. Go ahead. I throw a co- total curveball, 
and my appetizer is like wings or something, like something not even related <laughs> to the dude. It's like I it's like a say, mozzarella sticks. You, oh, that's a good idea. The mozzarella sticks is a good idea. I was also going to say you have to have stuffing. You could, that True. like can't be good for you or like especially before like yeah. a tournament like that. Oh my god! But, yeah, and like some rolls. Oh, you're just super yeah. bloated. Oh, but that's a honey great answer. Ham. All right, well. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Bronco and the Pig. As always, go watch sports, go love sports, and go enjoy sports. And we will be here to talk about sports with you next week as we go grow closer to the NFL draft. Baseball season's going to roll on. This is Bronco and the Pig. Peace. Bye.